and we are recording. So I talked previously about how the server side of our web system is highly concurrent. Lots of requests going on at once, handling them all at the same time and how we can use actors as a simple way of implementing concurrency. And in this video, I'd like to introduce actors, what they are, how you can write them, and to explain how, even though you might not know it, you're already using them. So first of all, what are actors? Well, they're a very simple way to think about concurrency. And the analogy I want to give you is if you can imagine a lot of old butlers in dusty houses that only communicate through the to the outside world through the post. And so they've got an in tray sitting there and they wander along. Uh, a butler wanders along and it takes the topmost message out of the in tray. And maybe that message says, polish the car. And so the butler walks off to the garage and it polishes the car. It, and when the butler is done, they walk back to the in tray and pick up their next message and go, ooh, what's this one? This one is to repaint the bathroom. All right, and it wanders off to go and repaint the bathroom. So an actor can do one thing at a time. And when it's done, it goes back to its mailbox to see if it's received any messages. And it takes the next message from the queue and it responds to that one. Now, sometimes this might involve sending messages to other actors. So I imagine that this butler has gone to the their in tray and they picked up the message that says repaint the bathroom and so they go and they get the paint tins and they get the paint and they walk up to the bathroom and they put it down and they get the ladder open and then they open the paint tin and they're out of paint well this butler only communicates via the post so this butler then sits down at a desk and writes a letter saying please send me more paint and goes and puts it uh, into the mailbox. Now, of course, this means that when we're writing our actor, we kind of need to think about what happens next because, you know, they've put that in the post and we'd like this actor actually to go and get on with the next thing, to then walk back to the in tray and pick up the next message and get on with that. And then later on in the post is suddenly going to come a tin of paint. Here is the paint for your painting. And when the actor comes back to the entry and picks up the tin of paint, here is the tr the paint for painting the bathroom. Then they can walk back up the stairs and get on and paint the bathroom. So it's this kind of concurrency, and uh, it removes a it removes a lot of the more complicated worries that we might have about concurrency. So um, I don't know if you uh, some of you will have come this across this before, some of you won't, but there are various data structures that uh, if you can change the data in them and if you try and change the data from different threads at the same time and it's not thread safe, it can lose data. So there's worries about you know keeping data correct if they're shared across uh, parallel threads. And in the actor model, the answer is, well, don't share the data across multiple threads. Each butler, if you like, is in their own house with their own stuff. No other butler is coming and taking that paint in away, away from them. They're just communicating with messages on their own things. Um, so it's about the most simple model of um, concurrency and parallelism that you're likely to come across. Um, OK, so ACA, uh, which I have included in the project base that you're starting from. ACA is an actor library and it's written in a language called Scala, which also runs on the Java virtual machine, but has great Java bindings. So you'll be writing Java code, but behind the scenes, there's going to be some Scala code going on. And to give away the punchline around how come if you uh, even if you don't know you're using actors, you already are using actors. Well, the play framework itself is built on top of actor, which is an actor library. So if we were to pop across to, this is a page of, from play's documentation, understanding play thread pools. How does it manage the number of different threads there are to handle web requests that are coming in? And if we scroll down, play's thread pools, Play default thread pool. This is the thread pool in which all of your application code in Play Framework is executed. It is an ACA dispatcher and is used by the application actor system. So Play, the framework that you are using, 
is built on actors and so even if you might not be coding the actors by hand behind the scenes to do your web stuff in this unit you are using actors now the code to write an actor is rather easy. I'm going to show you the Scala first. Uh, I think you'll find that you know you're able to read the Scala fairly well, and then I'll show you the Java. It's not very different, but it's it's a little bit plainer uh, in the Scala. Uh, so we say we've got a class, and let's call this one the Hello class, and it extends an actor, and it has in this case one method, and that method is called receive. And you might recall this uh, this notation from when I was talking about the roots. And uh, this is a partial function having a look at the message that came in and saying, well, if it's a name message, get out the name. And then we're going to print hello followed by that name. And there we go. That is our actor. We've just defined an actor that can act on precisely one kind of message. Uh, Let's have a look at that in Java. Well, Java syntax a little bit more verbose. There's a bit uh, verbose. There's a bit more text here, but it's really doing the same thing. Public class hello, and in this case, it extends untyped actor is the the Java parent class for the you know the Java API for using actor, and in this case to to make it a bit more uh, a bit more idiomatic for Java, um, the method is called onReceive because it, it's an event handler and it takes an object that's called the message and it's objects because well that message could be whatever you've decided it should be and so in this case we're saying well if this message is an instance of a name message then we're going to print out hello followed by from that name message let's get the name out and okay to be stylistically a bit better for Java I should have had that as a, as a get name as a, as a Java beans accessor method instead of just the the name uh, field on the message object. Uh, but so this is, if you like, the, the fundamentals of declaring an actor. Really rather simple. Uh, simple. You just need to have a message handler. Um, there is a little bit of a wrinkle though. If you look in the code, and we will in a moment, you'll see that there is some code, well the first line of code here, uh, and again I'm showing you the Scala first, is uh, uh, no, actually, sorry, I've changed this. In, I have changed this one into Java. Um, the first line of code here is creating the actor system, the the, the 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 system that is going to instantiate our actors and handle the the passing the messages between them. It's also going to be it's going to be our post office delivering the mail. Um, but this next line here is a little bit uh, unusual looking. Perhaps we've said actor ref hello is system actor of props.creativehello.class what's props well actor as an act as a an actor framework tries to be a bit clever it tries to make it so that uh, you can set it up so it's relatively transparent whether that actor you're talking about talking to is in the same process the same java executable the same java virtual machine as you are or whether it's actually sitting on a different machine across the network uh, in either case, you can post it a message and it will respond to it. Um, but obviously, you can't call the constructor of an object, uh, you know, of a class that's in on another machine. You can only call constructors of things that are here and with you in this virtual machine. So instead, the way Akka has it set up is you don't instantiate the actors yourself. You ask Akka to do it for you. And so you have to say, Akka, I would like an actor of the hello class. And this props object, uh, it contains what class you want it to instantiate, um, but it also then contains the list of constructor parameters you want to pass. Akka has to be able to call the constructor for whatever class you're trying to instantiate. And so that means somehow you have to give it the parameters to pass into that um, into that constructor. Uh, so props. Actors don't have direct references to each other. The other actor could be on another machine. So instead they just have an actor ref, if you like, having the address of the other actor to send the message in the mail. Uh, and the actor system, Acker, will actually handle getting the message to its de destination. So we can't call the constructor to create the actor. Acker has to do it for us. And props 
uh, says what sort of actor we want to create and also has the arguments that need to be passed to the constructor of an actor that we want to create. Uh, and so in this line here, and this is the Scala version, looks very, very similar, except I haven't had to declare what the types are and I haven't had to put semicolons at the end. Um, this says, create me a hello actor. And in this case, um, it doesn't take any, uh, any arguments. Um, though the, the Scala version, I can pass a name into the actor uh, into the actor there as well and say, and this actor is named... Uh, whatever it is, um, just a difference in the version of code I happen to put on the two slides. Um, you, you, you can do that for... Um, uh, so, so this second argument is legitimate in the Java as well. This props only having the hello in it is what says this is... I just want a, an actor uh, of class hello. Uh, so there we've got the props but we haven't got a name afterwards and the props doesn't have parameters after, after the hello.class. Um, okay. So, sending a message. If we have an actor ref, ref, we've got the address of this hello actor, and we want to send it a message, ask it to do something for us. What do we do? Well, we say, uh, we tell it, here's the message, and we say who we are. I've given you, first of all, the Scala code here, and Scala has a shorthand for it where you can say, hello, exclamation mark, here's my message. Um, but that does exactly the same as, you know, in this case, pong.tell, here's my message, here's who it's from. And the Java version, uh, Java doesn't have the ex exclamation version because that wouldn't be a legitimate uh, method name for Java. Uh, it just has the tell version, but so we can go pong.tell new name message with world. And so we're passing it an object as our message, and that's the object we've created. And in Java, you say get sender to get the actor ref to yourself for it to reply to if it wants to. Uh, so one line to send a message to another actor. What about asking a question? So suppose Algernon writes Bertie a letter asking a question. Sometime later, Bertie reads the letter, thinks about it back a, a bit and sen then sends the reply. And sometime later... Algernon reads the reply. Well, we could do this using what we've got so far. We could have Algernon tell Bertie the letter. We could have Bertie tell Algernon the reply. And we can have sometime later Algernon picks the message up. And we could do that as just different cases, different uh, if instance ofs in our message queue. Or we could have a little bit of a pattern for it. Suppose when I was writing the code for painting the bathroom and our butler orders the tin of paint, suppose I then didn't want to have to write a separate um, if instance of paint in the message handler. Suppose instead I just wanted to be able to write all of the stuff about the, the, the paint and just say, and look, and when the paint comes back, I want you to do this. Well, we can do this using an ask pattern. And so this, this pattern in the Scala version, they've got a, a, a little question mark for it. And it returns a type called a future. Um, when Algernon sends Bertie the question, sometime in the future he'll get a reply, but not right now. And we then want to talk about, and when that comes back, do something. Uh, in the Java version, we can do the same thing. So we, we can say, well, let's create a new timeout uh, because we might want to throw a, an exception if nothing happens, if, no, if a response doesn't come back in five seconds. And we can then say patterns.ask of this particular actor, this particular message with this particular timeout. And this, again, it returns a future of object, which is th this is an object that right now it doesn't contain anything, but sometime in the future it will, and that then it's going to be an object. And we could just deal with this synchronously. We could say, wait for the result uh, for that timeout. And in that case, we would pause our actors processing, stop what you're doing, wait five seconds to see if a result comes back. Um, but there's another way that we can do it using this, this future that I will show you later on, which says, all right, post the message and go back to the message queue and get on with what you're doing next. But I'm going to tell you right now when the reply comes back, what I want you to do with it. OK, so what's a future is the thing I'll introduce in the next video, of course. 
Um, first of all, let's pop across to the code that I have given you. Uh, and so in uh, wrong one, this one here, this is the, the project uh, base code that I gave you. And if we open this up, you'll see there's, there's an actors package and I've put uh, some fizzbuzz actors in there that are going to play fizzbuzz. And there's some controllers and there's some roots. And let, let's go and run it to um, make sure it does what we say. So let's go uh, SBT. Oh, I didn't put the SBT script in there. I, I shall uh, need to add that to, to your project. Um, uh, and so this should now be loading up my, my, my project. On Turing, the, the SBT script that's already there should work for you anyway. Um, but I'll uh, add a, an SBT launch script and an SBT launch jar to the project uh, straight after this video so that um, those of you who are working on your own machine and haven't installed SBT can grab, you know, reclone the project or pull an update or even just copy them into, into the project and you'll be able to run SBT from there. All right, so let's now run our project now that it's started. And so it's going to do its usual thing of going out to the internet to see if it's got all the libraries it needs, has it updated everything, running the application, listening on port 9000 by default. And let's pop across to a browser this way. Here's a browser. Let's create, uh, actually, let's just go straight there. Localhost 9000. And it's pausing because this is the point at which it starts compiling our code. So over here, compiling six Scala sources and seven Java sources. And uh, of course, you know, we've got this thing that, well, we didn't write the Scala sources. The play framework wrote those for us. Let's see if it's, oh, and yep, that looks like it's done a whole bunch of stuff because I'm getting some log output. So let's pop back here. And uh, here we have our page and we've got some stuff on it saying, one actor said one, another actor said two, another actor said fizz, another actor said uh, said four, player one said one, player two said two, etc. They're playing fizz buzz with each other and if we refresh the page they've got a little bit further. And if we refresh the page again they'll have got further still. Um, but let's just go change things for a moment and show you that this is something that is running in the background even while we're not making requests. Let's go into the actors, sorry that is uh, that's the uh, different courses proje project. Uh, let's go into this one and let's edit our fizzbuzz actor so that it will, um, let's just change the reply. Let's change reply so that it will say, Uh, no, no, no. Let's put in. Let's put in the received because then, then we just we get the message. System dot out. It's just going to be less code because uh, otherwise I I hadn't generalized the collecting of the message. And so if I try and print it out on the on the way out, I will have to change the message a little bit more. I received, and let's then go message dot to string. So this should now be printing stuff on the terminal. If I go and refresh to cause it to recompile and restart. So let's refresh, it will recompile. And now over here, the actors have started playing fizzbuzz and you can see that they're going away. Um, even though the page, well, that's how far they've got. Okay, they're up to 77 and the page refresh has stopped because that was a one-time render of a page. But back over here, well, they're, they're going away and they're going away and they're talking to each other. All right, so now let's talk through a little bit about where all that code sits in the code. Um, so the first thing to say is here is our fizzbuzz actor and this is its on receive. And so at the moment, whenever it gets a message, it's printing out, I received that message and we saw it printing out at the command line. Meanwhile, if the message equals the string marshal, I'm doing something else with it. I'm grabbing the actor reference from the sender of this message and I'm storing it in a reference up here to the marshal actor. And we'll see what that does in a moment. Um, if the message is another actor reference at the moment, 
I am saying, OK, this is the kickoff. The other actor I've got is the other player. And so instead, that actor reference that I've just been sent, I'm going to send it the message one to start the game running, to start off his buzz game. Um, generally speaking, I would suggest having more meaningful message names than I've done here. I've done this to show you that you can send anything as a message. Um, ge uh, generally speaking, though, I would uh, recommend that, you know, instead you would have a start game that contains the actor reference rather than just sending the actor reference itself. Um, if the message is a number, then, well, the next number we want to talk about in our FizzBuzz game is that number plus one. And so then uh, we need to send a reply, and I've got a method down here all about replying. If the message isn't, if it's something like fizz or buzz or fizz buzz, then, well, OK, uh, let's assume for the moment that the last number I had was the number I told it. Uh, the, the number, you know, was when I, when I was replying. And so they've then said fizz, and so that's plus one. And I have to say the next one after that. So plus two is what I want to reply with. And so down here, we've then got the, the fizz buzz uh, functionality itself. If the next number is divisible by five and three, then we're going to grab the sender that we received the message from, and we're going to tell them fizz buzz. And it's going to be from this actor, so from get self. And while we're doing it, we're also going to tell the marshal. So the marshal is kind of like the umpire for the game. We're sending it to the, we're telling the other actor, Fizzbuzz, and we're telling the marshal that started the game, Fizzbuzz. If it's just divisible by five, we send buzz. If it's just divisible by three, we send fizz. And otherwise, we tell them the number as an integer. And to avoid this running incredibly, incredibly quickly, I've then told this actor to go to sleep for a quarter of a second. Uh, so that's why these actors are going quite slowly it's because i've told them to have a little snooze for a quarter of a second before they go back to the mailbox uh, to do the next thing so that is the actors just doing that ordinary stuff that actors do the marshal meanwhile it has a slightly different job this marshal here it has a string builder um, so a bit of a memory and this marshal Whenever it receives a message um, from the FizzBuzz players, is appending it onto this list of what's happened. Uh, so each time it gets a fizz or a FizzBuzz, it's sticking a thing saying, well, this actor said this message. But there's a different special kind of message this one's responding to. If the message is the string report, instead we're going to reply with what did everyone say? And so this is how the controller for this page is getting what's been said in the game. It's going to go and ask the marshal, send me everything that's been said. And they've got up to a thousand and I told it to stop at a thousand. OK, so where is this? Well, that code in controllers.application, so in the index, and we'll see in a moment that this is wired up to a root, there's some code here that ha looks a little bit different than what you've seen before. It's got this completion stage of result. I'll talk about that when we do the stuff on futures. And it's got this future converters dot to Java. I'll talk about that when we talk about uh, about futures. But the bit I want to show you in here is this is where it is doing that ask pattern ask the marshal actor to report and i've got a timeout of a thousand milliseconds and so the marshal actor is going to receive this message called report and it's going to reply back with the stuff that we're then going to send through in the result and so here we're relying on the fact that play is built on top of an actor framework and so although this itself uh, isn't, you know, it says it extends controller rather than saying it extends actor. Well, actually, play is built in an actor system, and so we can talk to other actors like we're an actor. Um, over here, just to show you that the root is set up, uh, so there is where that root uh, on the slash path for get requests <laughs> is wired through to our application.index method. And so every time I hit that page, it's making a call to this method. It's sending a message 
to this martial actor uh, that is then replying with the contents of this string uh, buffer. And here we can see one of these props objects. This is to, you know, to, uh, the, 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 for something to instantiate a, one of these actors and its constructor has no um, constructor parameters. So all that's going to be in that props is martial actor doc, uh, is the, the, the class name. And where everything gets set up, well, it's all set up in this class called setup. And so we'll see here is creating the martial actor. Uh, so we, we, we've, in this case, you'll notice we've not actually done actor system dot create. Instead, we've asked for one to be injected. Um, so Play Framework also has something called Google Juice, uh, which is a dependency injection framework where you can say, I want a one of these and Google Juice will sort out passing you one if there's one available. And so here we've said that this constructor here for the setup, it wants an actor system. It wants the play framework actor system is the one that it's going to get. So that gets injected in and it's then asking it to create one of these martial actors, asking it to create two FizzBuzz actors, player one and player two. And then it tells player one who the martial actor is and it tells player two um, who uh, who the martial actor is and then it tells player one about player two and it pretends that this message came from player two. Um, in terms of what creates this, well this itself gets created by Google Juice again. Uh, this is a singleton uh, annotation which tells Google Juice I want you to create exactly one of these. And if anyone asks for one around the place, I want you to give them the one that you've created. Don't create multiple, just create one, pass it to anyone that asks. There is one of these in our system. Um, so that was a little bit of a tour of uh, one side of the sample project that I've given you. Um, as I say, you may or may not find that in the project you decide to do, you're creating lots of actors. Um, whether you do or whether you don't, Play Framework itself uh, is built behind the scenes using the actor uh, Acker, which is an actor system. And so again, this is showing you a little bit about what's going on under the hood and ways of considering concurrency from the fact that our server has to be able to serve lots of different requests at once.